Hey guys, welcome back to The Divine Witch. So today we are going to discuss The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, from a pagan perspective. So let's go ahead and dive in, but before we do, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Let's get started. So as we get into this, I want to say, if you haven't seen the movie, go see the movie before you watch this. That way it gives you out of context. If not, I'm going to spoil the movie for you, and that's no fun for you, unless you don't plan to watch it. So, let's go ahead and let's dive in. So, the first thing that we need to talk about is the difference between movie reality and actual reality. Now, around the time that this movie is out currently, there is also a documentary that has been shot about the Devil Made Me Do It case. Because it was the first case in U.S. history where the devil was going to be put on trial. Which, if you follow and you know, the reality is the judge didn't want to be the judge that put the devil on trial. So that verdict, that plea, or we should say, was not valid and never even got, you know, to be uh, tried at any point. But there was some eyewitness statements of during the time of the trial, um, lights would be messing up, different sounds like, you know, it was kind of almost like the devil came into the courtroom and added this spooky, ooky vibe. Um, around this case and I personally think that's probably one of the reasons why they decided not to use the verdict besides being the one you know to be hey I'm the judge that let the trial of the devil made me do it because in reality you got to think about it like this if someone gets to use this plea how many other people are going to be like oh the devil made me do it I was possessed so therefore you know you continue this trend of allowing this to happen which to me it makes sense now, there has been a lot of cases where, especially uh, the case of Emily Rose, where she died um, and they took all the information from the possession and stuff like that um, to present to the court that there was no neglect upon the parents, you know, part and everything else. Because one of the things that we got to realize is, you know, the difference between fantasy and reality is, you know, at some point this was the reality for somebody. It's not just... Um, something that you say freely and coming from a spiritual context when we start talking about things that are possessive or dark dark in the sense of not what we would consider pure by the way you might see it my dog is going crazy which is funny because it's a black dog and we're talking about the devil made me do it movie but keep that in mind that this, these things did happen to somebody. Um, so, you know, just putting it out there. Now, like I was saying with the whole Emily Rose case, you know, it hasn't been the first time that um, the thing of possession has come into play when it comes to um, this type of thing, especially, you know, in cases where people die. This is kind of one of the reasons why there is you know medical backgrounds that have to be met and checked and during exorcisms it's normal to have um, somebody with a medical field around so that way they can kind of keep an eye on them as well so these are things that I feel like was kind of missed in the movie and not really put out there as far as that goes it might have been different around that time I do not know you know as time goes on things fluctuate and they differ on you know what you have to do but there is a rigorous process when it comes to when it comes to um, possession and actually getting the church involved like it's not like oh you say you're possessed let us help you no like it's very strenuous and when we start getting into the parts where there's the totem, the witch totem under the house, that never happened. Um, from what I've seen, what I've read, it never happened. There was no totem underneath the house where um, the satanic cult or the cult of the ram. It just kind of goes into the mythology of the actual Conjuring movies versus the reality of the Conjuring movies. Uh, from the beginning, what they said is that uh, Debbie and Artie who was uh, her boyfriend, I think, at the time, because they ended up getting married way later. So, yeah. They went to go move into this house. The brothers ended up coming over with the mom. 
to kind of help them move stuff around. And that's when we got the first encounter, which is the waterbed scene. Now, in the movie, the waterbed scene is like, oh, it's in the waterbed. Kind of paying homage to, you know, like uh, Nightmare on Elm Street when Johnny Depp was sucked in. But if you look at the documentary from the eyewitness first accounts, they were pushed onto the bed. And then they seen this man who looked like an older gentleman, not just some creepy creature, and ended up telling them, you need to get out. It's not safe, basically. So then as we go on down the timeline, you know, the Lorraine and Ed get involved in this case. But what you're missing in between the movie versus what actually happened, like I said in the documentary, is that at first Debbie was like, ah, this is the kid stuff, whatever. But then later that night when these kids come up and they're talking to them, like, hey, look, this is what happened. You guys don't need to move in there. Even their mom, Judy, was like, something just doesn't feel right, don't move in there. And Debbie, of course, was thinking, you know, it's my mom, she doesn't want me to move, the whole nine yards, but it was nothing to do with that. But she did decide not to move in there. And they ended up moving in with the mom. This is kind of where we're at, where you see uh, Lorraine, the, the child, and all that. Now, this wasn't a wham, bam, you're possessed, ma'am. No, this is a thing that was going on for a while. This entity was connected to the boy. So, the, the entity could show the boy and talk to the boy from a long distance from the house that it was at. And at one point, the boy's like, it's coming to us. It's coming here. And this is kind of where we get the mother judy coming in with the holy water and then the demon goes back and then it comes it's it's almost like pre-possession okay so that's basically what's going on now when we start getting into the thick of it we notice that arnie ends up saying take me leave the boy alone which was a big mistake because you got to think about it you know containing a demonic child versus a demonic adult there's the power strength, even though, you know, there's all this um, talk about if you are possessed that you have more strength. But just imagine like a kid with strength, okay? You can still be held down by maybe like three or four people. An adult who is erratic, able to, you know, do whatever they want, it's a little bit more dangerous. And this is kind of where we got Lorraine, which in both instances in the movie and in reality, she was like, no, stop because you're challenging it now in the movie they talk about it was the devil um now do i know if it was the devil no because when it comes to certain leagues certain legions you kind of get this thing of going back and forth but it slowly they find the demon that is associated with it in the cult so as this possession of transference is going they think everything is fine debbie and arnie end up moving out they end up moving um into a place where there was a dog shelter this part is true there was a dog shelter there was an apartment over top they were drinking one night they were really good buddies like this wasn't uncommon for them and then one night the guy who was the landlord and also the owner of the dog grooming service because debbie was a dog groomer he ended up grabbing debbie arnie didn't like it before you know it it turned into like almost like this fight going back and forth Arnie ends up pulling out a knife and stabbing um, the owner. So, here's the things that you didn't get in the movie. One, he was from Australia. They were best buds before this happened. And in that moment where aggression came out, Debbie had seen that this was not Arnie. It was the spirit that he had um, challenged. Now, is it possible for possession to lie dormant? Well, of course it is. Um, but not all possession is aggressive. Some is, some isn't. Um, possession can be done by going in and out. It doesn't mean that a person is completely possessed, you know, throughout the whole way, which is something I believe Lorraine was talking about in the actual documentary versus the movie. So that kind of gives a little context of how this possession goes on. Now, like I said, as we go, there's a little totem that's supposed to be connected to this witchcraft, stuff like that. They start doing this journey, deep dive down the rabbit hole, and that's kind of what you're being followed. But when you watch the docuseries, it talks about, from the family's perspective, of this happening to Arnie, them getting a hold of um, 
Ed and Lorraine, and they're like, we're going to put the devil on trial and all this. Well, if you keep on searching deep enough between this, there is a rumor that it was all made up. That Ed and Lorraine were saying that they're going to put the devil on trial and it's going to make them famous and they're going to make so much money off of it. Now, I can't say that as fact because I was not there. But it is a piece of information that I do want to throw out there as kind of like, have this in your mind. So, how do I feel about all this as a pagan's perspective? Well, first off, possession is one of those things that is encompassed not only in just the Christian mythology, but all different pantheons throughout time have had different experiences with possession, what it means, what it can do, um, how it can alter somebody's mind, how to break possession. There's so many different ways um, throughout history if you start looking at it. But Christianity and Catholicism has really been like the forefront of it and everything prior has kind of been left in the shadows. But possession goes all the way back to Sumerian days and probably even older than that. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Possession isn't just towards one religion. It's towards all religions. And some of the demons that you see within Catholicism or in the Goetic were actually older gods at some point. At least it's theorized that way. So, you know, do your research when it comes to things like that. So when it also comes to the totem, are totems real? Can people you know, be cursed or um, placed underneath their house or around their house to curse the family. Yes, it is possible. It is something that does happen. It's very rare because at that point, you got to think that you're using your energy, which is connected to this item. And normally, it wouldn't be somewhere easily spotted. Like, even in the movie, when you see him going down through the baseboard, not baseboards, but, like, underneath the house and stuff like that, like, it wouldn't just be sitting there perfect. It would have actually been buried. Uh, for the reason being, you don't want someone that you're cursing to actually find it. So, making it somewhat that easy to where you can go down there and look isn't going to be a realistic uh, viewpoint. Now, some people will actually put them in your house. They can put them in your vents. Um, baseboards it could have been built into the wall depending on you know how old your house is and the history around your land so it is possible and it could have even like if this totem was real it could have been possible that it was something that was placed there when the place was built no one wanted this anybody to be on this land so this is how they did it um, it just really depends so I just kind of want to throw that out there as my own personal opinion as far as the totem itself. Now when we go into purification and rituals and possession and getting rid of possession, you know, there's a, there's a line of command. Now in Catholicism, from what I know, only certain people can do it, which is shown in the movie, talked about in the documentary. And I think at this point it's kind of like, well, knowledge that you have to be trained to do this. And... From what I've heard, they all train in all these other religions along with their own religion and learning how to use the tools and their faith to kind of push it out. That's from what I've gotten in my experience and my time uh, researching about possession, demonic or otherwise. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. So when we come up to the point where there's old possessed items, and you get the saying, you know, um, I don't know if I'll be exact on this, but it was like, I'd rather have it locked away than be free on the streets. That is a thing. That is one thing that I will say throughout this whole movie that I completely 100% agree with. If you have a demonic entity and you trap it, then you at least know where that item is. You know where that thing is. It's not free of that vessel in which it's been encompassed in. So that way, you're not really like, Ooh, what's going on? Now, here's the thing with vessels and objects. Objects are just a holding place. So if they're not protected by something um, spiritual or in a place to where it's not protected from it escaping that, 
it does make it hard because there is a possibility of being able to move to and throw. Um, I've actually got a possessed um, stuffed animal upstairs to where I've watched this thing come in and out of it and you can see the different expressions and you think to yourself this is a crazy notion but when you're around it but me myself I don't have it enclosed I give it free room but I do ask that it respects me and my family and the home and it's done that and it's even warned me during certain things so you know I give it respect enough to know what's in there but also it gives me respect enough to know hey I'm not being harmed it's not doing anything to me you know what I mean it's kind of one of those things now people may not think that's the wisest idea but I've had it for over two years and knock on wood um, didn't happen that's another thing I want to talk about since we're talking about knocking on wood knocking on wood is the old tradition that wood keeps memories and has the ability to make things come about so there's the old saying like I was talking about of knocking on wood three times so that way it wouldn't be true at least that's how I grew Excuse up you. and the knocking on wood as I don't want it to happen you know what I mean so to me when I seen the knocking on the wood um, you know it has been one of the things that you'll see in multiple investigations where the knock of three where it's supposed to be um, you know Jesus died on the cross at 3 p.m. so 3 a.m. is like making fun of it hearing knocking sounds not just on wood but within walls or on doors this is um, the calling card for spirits saying hey I'm fucking here now as far as demonic um, I mean it could be the same thing I guess it depends on what energy you feel around you within the home another thing that I want to talk about when we're talking about different approaches to this movie as we start to get closer to the end you know they're breaking the altar in which the spell is casted so when we come to this part I mean I guess it it would be symbolic and it would make sense because this is where it is being casted this is where the person is actually doing their magic from but to me I don't think it would break that connection now as far as the spirit and bartering spirits and bartering and calling forth are a little bit different than I put this item here in its possession um, it kind of goes back into the cursing the hexing whatever you wish to call it so when we start getting into this level of where you know you're making a deal making a deal when you summon something is like I'm gonna give you something and you give me what I want and you know there's normally this whole rigorous process of making your contract having one you burn having one you keep so that way if the entity if it's a trickster tries to change your perspective then you know you can refer back and be like no 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 so as far as coming as that person and taking their soul is this something that could happen i mean i would say possibly but have i ever seen it happen no so from my perspective it's just a cautionary tale of when you summon something make sure that you fulfill your needs no matter if it's angelic demonic entity deity whatever it may be you always keep your word and if you can't keep it then you will pay the consequences that I do believe in so as far as like the movie versus my pagan perspective you know what gets me about these movies which you know people like to see especially in Hollywood the good witch versus the bad witch there's never an in-between spot and a lot of us work and walk the gray path it is not what we see as good or bad it's what the finding the balance is within our life and nine times out of ten people aren't going to curse you just because they don't like you there's got to be reason there's got to be motive so that's where we get in that gray area so I wanted to point that out as well as far as my perspective now as far as the movie goes it's a great movie I liked watching it personally I mean if I'm not thinking about it in a pagan perspective and I'm just thinking of it as a cinematic viewing then it's it's amazing now if I'm thinking about it from a pagan's perspective and looking at it there's a few things that are different if I'm thinking about it in a world world terms versus a fantasy versus the reality you know it's kind of like a miss 
and then maybe one or two hits into it and the rest is kind of like weaving in and out but as I say always you know it's an experience to be had and I feel like that's what the Conjuring movies give us it allows us to see the other side without becoming the other side and I think that's what draws people into it especially when it comes to movies about possession and exorcisms and the church it's just this mystic thing that no one really knows for sure certain what is out there what is being said what is being done so therefore it just puts this light of mystery upon it which draws us in even more so would i suggest watching the movie for a cinematic value yes would i say that it's 110 percent accurate no so just kind of remember whenever you're watching a movie that they're going to add some things that are not real. Do your own research. And always remember, my friends, no two witches, which alike.